It's 2.30 in the afternoon. I think I better stop and have some lunch. Do you know it's easy to go right through the lunch hour when you're on the ketogenic diet because you just don't get hungry like you do on a regular diet. But I do have a meal I want to prepare and share with you. And this meal comes from suggestions for a couple of viewers. Corned beef hash. And what gets more classic than that? So I have a twist on the corned beef hash that makes it low carb. So why don't we get down to my preparation area? I'll show you what I've got. We'll get the meal started. So corned beef hash is a classic, without question. It's one of those comfort foods that, you know, if you've had it, you know what I'm saying. If you haven't had it, you need to try it. But normally it is made with potatoes, which are too high in starchy carbohydrates to be on a low carb or ketogenic diet. But you can sub out a few things for the potatoes. And one of the things you can sub out is rutabagas. So what I have, and I might as well go through with everything, is rutabagas. Now, I saved a little time, and you'll see these a little bit closer in a minute, but I've already pre-diced up my rutabagas. I've got about a cup, maybe a little bit more, of diced rutabagas, kind of long quarter-inch uh, slices. So that will be the primary portion of the meal, but I've also got some onion pre-diced, ready to go, and I've got some corned beef. Now, this is canned corned beef. It's not fresh corned beef from the deli, which would have been even nicer, but I had a can, a, a can of corned beef that I wanted to use up so that's what I have here is half the can. Now most of the time or a lot of the time people like putting an egg on top so I brought an egg and we'll fry that up right after the rest of the meal is prepared so that I can get it on top of the meal before it gets cold and I have some uh, shredded cheddar cheese as well to put on top. I'm not positive I'll use it but I may well. There's one other ingredient you see in some recipes you don't see them in all the recipes and that is heavy cream. So I'll be putting heavy cream in with the ingredients when it all goes into the fry pan. Now I do have a few other things. I have some ghee and some olive oil that I'll be using for frying things up with, but uh, th essentially those are the ingredients. But before I can prepare the meal, I first have to get a fire going. So why don't we do that now? So for the fire today, I'm going to be using my Gen 2 uh, firebox. And this is the titanium version. So let's get this show on the road. A little bit of birch bark here. I'm gonna do it the, what I call the simple way, which is just to roll it in my hands and powder it up a little bit. Like that. I have another piece to transfer into the firebox. Been a while since I've been able to use my ferrocerium rod and make fires, so. It's always fun to do it I'm using the uh, Leatherman, the back of the saw to, for the sparking, like that. And I should be able to dump that in. Throw in a couple more pieces. Good old birch bark. And I have all kinds of little pine twigs all broken up. They'll go right in on top. No need to be too precise. Those things take off very, very quickly. And I have some other small branches I can add. And then eventually I'll work my way up with larger and larger pieces. And then I have some about inch and a half rounds that have been split. And that'll be my primary fuel. All right, let's let that fire get caught. And we'll come back when it's time to put the pot on. Man, you just have to love the firebox. Steve did such a good job with the design, refined down to, you know, near perfection if there is such a thing. And I have a lot of stoves, as you know, but I always enjoy coming back to the firebox. It's just, everything is there, all the options you need. There are more things you can do with the firebox than most people will ever probably try, including me. But right now, it's all about getting my pot on. Give it a few minutes to come to a boil. And then we're going to get the rutabaga, rutabaga uh, pieces put in because what we have to do with those is soften them up by boiling them for about 10 minutes, maybe a little less. And we'll just, I'll check softness. So uh, when the water comes to a boil, we'll add the rutabaga. All right, that did not take long at all for that to come to a boil. So let's get the lid off. Yeah, that's nice. 
get my rutabagas in. How am I going to do this without making a mess? Getting spattered with hot water. Oop, I lost a few of them into the fireplace. Oh, well, I had more than enough. Now that'll have to come back to a boil. I don't think it's going to take 10 minutes, but it might, so I'm not in any rush. You don't want them too soft, but again, you don't want them too hard. So I'll check them in about seven or eight minutes and see where they are. And if they're ready, we'll take them off. All right, at least 10 minutes. Let's see if I can get one out for testing. Hot. Mmm, perfect. Okay. Still a little bit of texture for them. They haven't gone to much, but I can't leave them go any longer. So I'm going to take them off. I'm going to drain them. And then you have to dry them. But I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a second. But I'm just going to off camera drain these out and I'll show you how I'm going to dry them out a little bit. Okay, honestly, I don't know how well this is going to work. I'll tell you what I was going to do, and uh, then I'll tell you what I am going to do. What I was going to do was drop the uh, rutabaga pieces into this bandana that I have inside of my plate, and then squeeze the water out just to kind of make things, uh, get rid of the water, expedite the process a little bit. But I'm going to try something else. This is either going to be an absolute failure or a great trick. Probably... The first part, not the second part. And the reason why I went from doing the squeeze to the second trick is because I didn't want to make a mash out of the uh, out of the fries. Do I have them all? Yep. All right, they're empty. Okay. I, like I said, I don't know how well this is going to work. Get that little piece of leaf out. Grab the four corners. <laughs> and I'm going to spin this around my head and see how it works. Let me position the camera so you can see me doing that. You know how you get an idea sometimes and you said, oh, geez, that's genius, right? That'll really work out well. Well, that's my thinking, but it may not at the same time. It may work. I may lose my lunch and it may do nothing at all. So let's just give this a try. Well, there's water coming out of them, I can see. I don't know how much of a difference it made. So uh, don't try this at home, unless you can afford to lose your lunch that way. All right, they're drier than they were. All right, next step. Uh, stoked her back up a little bit. Some of the wood is uh, still catching on, but that's okay. I don't want it to get too hot anyway. Put my pan on for the next step. And the next step is to cook up the uh, onions first, and then we'll be adding other stuff back in. So ghee is my oil of choice. It's my oil of choice most of the time, to be honest. And I know I've mentioned this a few times, but ghee is one of your best choices for cooking in, in the woods. A couple of reasons, but the primary reason is it has such a high smoke point. It has the highest smoke point of all the fats that you can cook with. So you're less likely to burn the oil and they're for impart bad flavors to your uh, to your meal. And I can see now my pan is a little bit off. Where's my glove? I'm gonna have to, I can still do this. And my firebox is starting to take a set. Let's see if I can even it up a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Let's get the onions in there. Now I may add a little olive oil as well, but there we go. And it looks a little hot, so I'm going to have to keep these things moving. And I'm only going to have to cook these until I start to see them go a little translucent, a little yellow, maybe a little bit of browning, caramelization. But you don't want to burn them. So you've got to keep an eye on the fire as well as what you're cooking. And if you have to lift the pan off, you lift the pan off. All right, it'll come back in a minute when it's time to add the rutabagas. That did not take long at all. So let's get the rutabagas in. Now here's where the fun begins. I have a choice. I can either keep frying these, 
then take them off so I can get the other ingredients ready or I can try and do both at the same time. You know what's going to happen if I do that, right? I think I'm going to have to pay attention to these and keep these moving because there's a lot of heat in, underneath them in that firebox and that fact so much heat I may end up having to take these off to let it die down a little bit. So I'm not trying to fry these to a complete crisp, certainly not a mush. All I'm trying to do is, uh, I don't know, brown them up a little bit, I guess. So the whole point of drying them out is you want to get it rid of as, as much water as possible before you put them in the fry pan because any water will obviously turn to steam and that'll just take the rutabagas into a mushier state and longer for them to cook. So if you can get them dried out, you'll then have a better meal at the end. And as you can probably see, things are starting to brown a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna work on these, and when it's time to add the next ingredient, that's when I'll come back. All right, quick update. What I did do was uh, take them off before they get stuck or too burnt. And they're looking wonderful. I let the fire die down a little bit. I just put one piece in. I've got some hot coals, which is ideal for cooking on as long as they don't cool off too much. I do need the heat to come up in a minute because when I add the next ingredient, it's going to cool things off. So I will have to have some flame. So that's why I threw in that piece of, of uh, wood. And what's the next ingredient? What's corned beef hash without corned beef? So this is that half can of corned beef. I took it, uh, just chopped it up. That's all I did. Chopped it up, nothing special. This is gonna be a big meal, you know. I'm gonna try and estimate the macros, the carbs, the fats, the proteins, and I'll put all that in the uh, video description below. But now, it's just a matter of getting these to start frying up before I add, I call it the seat gurgit ingredient. I don't see, as I mentioned, the, the heavy whipping cream in a lot of recipes, but when I tried it at home with the heavy whipping cream, what a difference it made to the browning on the bottom and getting that nice caramelized crisp that makes these things so good. All right, so that's going to take a few minutes. I've got to have some heat to do this. And then I'll come back when we're ready to add the next ingredient. A few minutes later. And the hash, or the corned beef, I'm sorry, is starting to brown. It's all nice and soft and hot. Now, recipes don't usually call for the two ingredients I'm going to put in, but I just like my garlics. So some garlic powder. I won't be adding salt. Can you imagine why? That corned beef was plenty salty. And some Cajun spices. Not exactly traditional, I know, but uh, flavor's great. As soon as I mix those spices through, ooh, smell them. Now comes the last ingredient, and I'm hoping that it won't be too hot. Heavy whipping cream. Mmm. You know, for how many years I avoided using heavy whipping cream or because it was just considered bad for you, bad for your health? Well, not anymore. And you still have to take into account the total calories, but not the fact that it's full of fat. In fact, that makes it healthier than a lot of people previously would have given it credit for. But if you're on the ketogenic diet, or the low carb diet, you already know that. So what am I doing? I have mixed it through and I've kind of patted this thing down and I'm just gonna leave it there for a couple minutes. And the idea of leaving it there is to caramelize the bottom layer, kind of give it some browning, almost a little bit like burning. Now, uh, fair warning, I had every intention of putting a fried egg on top of this 
Uh, by the size of that meal and the lateness in the day, what I'm going to do is just eat this as is. Now, when I did this at home the other day, that's exactly what I did. I added a fried egg, an over easy egg, right on top of it, and then I uh, scattered some cheese on top of that, and it all melted down into one gorgeous meal. Today, it's just going to be this. I may put the cheese on, though. At the very end, when I transfer it to the plate, I'll put some cheese on top of it because I think that adds a nice flavor and a little bit more fat and protein. But uh, upwards of five minutes, just leave it there, don't touch it. You don't want to disturb the caramelization that's taking place on the bottom. So when I'm ready to transfer it from this into my platter, that's when I'll bring it back. All right, here we go. Gave it about five minutes. Oh, I can feel the crusties underneath. Oh, look at that. And that pan is hot. A little sticking, not bad. No, actually, it didn't stick too much at all. This pan is uh, carbon steel and it's slowly taking a seasoning the more I use it. Can't ask for any more than that. Set that aside. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm almost wishing now that I put the egg on top, but I think that's going to be fine just the way it is. But like I said, the one thing I will do is add some of this cheddar cheese on. Actually, add it all on. It's not that much. Okay, time for the taste test. So let me set the camera up. We'll sit down in my hammock chair. We'll give it a taste test. Right, there it is. Okay, I think I'll uh, give you the old look at the meal. And get it in there, there we go. Here's what I wanna show you is that caramelization that takes place, that crusting. That's extra flavor like you wouldn't believe. Okay, reposition the camera a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. That's what I want after right there is some of that crusty. Mm. Oh man. Do you know, it, it's not something that I've had a lot over the years is corned beef hash. I've had it in some restaurants. Uh, I've had it at other people's houses. We don't make it a lot at home. It's not because I don't like it. In fact, I love it. It's more because someone else in the household doesn't like it too much. And for the longest time, I thought this was an unhealthy meal. Little did I know just how much health benefits there are from eating a meal like this. I know not everybody agrees with me, but uh, if you look at the research, and I keep saying I'm going to do a video on the ketogenic diet and lifestyle, this actually is healthier than you might think. Okay, another taste. Really, I, I need to know, do you, those of you who make corned beef hash, do you put heavy cream in on top of yours? I had never seen that until I came across the recipe and when I tried it, it was like a mind blowing revelation. It did a lot of that caramelization on the bottom of the food on the, on the pan. Who would have thought? Add richness, adds fat of course, which is always good for a ketogenic diet. Mmm. Okay. I could keep going, but I, I know we have to close the video up. So here's the question. Have you made corned beef hash in the woods, and was your recipe at all similar to this? Now, I would have loved to have gone to a deli counter and got some proper corned beef rather than a canned corned beef. But when you have that and it's, you know, it, it works, right? It works. It may not be as tasty, but it's still very good. Um, let me know if you have tried it. Let me know if you're going to try it and uh, what you think of it if you do try it. And what I'd like you to do for me, like this meal when it actually came from suggestions of other viewers, 
Give me some suggestions. Things that if you're on the ketogenic diet or low carb diet, things that you cook for yourself while you're in the woods, or recipes you'd like to see if I can convert to cooking in the woods, uh, I'm open to suggestions. All right, any comments that you have, any questions you have, put them in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.